Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the Chrysler 6.4 liter Hemi V8 as part of my Fatal Flaw series for the Chrysler engines. My plan is to cover them all eventually, and we've already done the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, and both the pre-Eagle 03-08, and Eagle 5.7 Hemi V8 from 09 to the present day. The 6.4 liter Hemi V8 is one step above that, and it's very popular, found in about 10 different Chrysler applications, and it's also powerful, packing a ton of performance. However, we're not here today to talk about the success of the 6.4 Hemi, but rather a couple of fatal flaws. I'll cover the specs of the engine and which vehicles it's found in, and then we'll look at all the various flaws, explaining their issues, why they happen, what can be done to prevent them, and more. So let's get right into it. So first, let's look at the engine specs of the 6.4 Hemi, also known as the 392, for 392 cubic inches, or by its codename, Apache. The engine was actually first shown off by Chrysler in 2005, and it was rated for 525 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque back then. It was also available in 07 as a crate engine. The first production 392 Hemi was launched in the 2011 Dodge Challenger SRT8, with variable camshaft timing and MDS in cars with an automatic transmission. This Apache Hemi was based on the 5.7 liter Eagle Hemi. The 2012 Dodge Charger, Chrysler 300, and Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8s followed suit by having the 392 as standard equipment the following year. From 2011 to 2014, the output was rated at 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Moving forward, all the 2015 to present Charger and Challenger RT scat packs and the 2015 to 2018 SRT 392s came with this engine, and the output was raised to 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. The engine is also available in the 2018 to present Dodge Durango SRT, the 2015 to present Chrysler 300 SRT that's overseas, the 2015 to present Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, and the 2021 to present Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392. Various badging is found on these vehicles, usually it's a 392 Fender badge for North America, and 6.4 liter Hemi around the world. It's also worth noting that starting in 2014, the Ram 2500 and 3500 trucks, along with Ram 3500, 4500, and 5500 cab chassis offered a truck version of the 6.4 liter. This engine was revised and retuned for better fuel economy and power that was used for hauling and towing rather than all-out performance. These 6.4s have between 366 to 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque depending on the application. So let's move on to the fatal flaws, and the first one is that the engine is pretty much at the limit of the performance as it is, and they're easy to blow up and they're simply not reliable with boost with the stock internals. You have to forge them. This is a fairly significant problem in my eyes, as the owners of these types of high performance cars are often people that have a lot of money and like going fast, and they want to look for ways to upgrade their vehicles and achieve quicker and faster performance times. Going with forced induction systems is a very popular route, like a roots type supercharger, centrifugal blowers, or turbos. Unfortunately, the bottom end of the stock 392, specifically the rods and pistons, are just unable to withstand boost safely. It does have a forged steel crankshaft, but the real weak point are the hyper-eutectic pistons. It might be okay to run moderate boost, so 5 to 6 psi, and the general consensus is that at that pressure it's somewhat reliable, but there still are failures in blown engines, and the pistons of course can take out valves and potentially other costly parts within the engine. If you go above that PSI, then the engine becomes a real ticking time bomb. Of course some people get lucky and this may not apply to everyone, but the higher boost levels mean the bigger horsepower increases, so that's what the power hungry customers would be after. So why does this happen? Well simply put, the engineers didn't design these pistons with the considerations that future owners would modify or boost their vehicles. Those hyper eutectic pistons are lightweight, designed for better gas mileage and less energy needed to move them. They're more brittle than a forged piston would be. To explain a little further, here's a generic diagram on screen so you can follow along with the parts. Note again, this is not a specific diagram of the 6.4 Hemi pistons. But on the 6.4 pistons, the upper ring land is raised very close to the top of the piston. On the 6.4 pistons, the upper ring land is raised very close to the top of the piston, and it was designed that way for various reasons like to run cleaner and burn off all gases for emissions. Because if the rings are higher, it makes the edges run at a higher temperature, again better for emissions without getting too technical. The rings are also really thin and have a very tight close gap from the factory. When higher PSI boost levels are introduced, 
The heat increases the temperature in the cylinders, and the rings expand more than they are gapped for. They can't take this heat, but they also can't expand properly with the tighter gap. This then creates excess pressure, and the top of the piston becomes susceptible to breaking or cracking. Pieces of the edges of the upper ring land can also chip or break off and cause more damage to the engine. So to make a long story short, the 6.4 liter Hemi has weak rods and pistons that are not able to handle boost safely without being swapped out for forged internals. And if you do decide to boost the vehicle, you kind of do so at your own risk and have to be very careful. So the most reliable way to prevent this issue and be safer when adding boost, all other aspects aside, would be to use forged rods and pistons. Unfortunately, this can be a $3,000 or more cost when it's all said and done, and that's usually on top of the rest of your expensive engine project. So that's one reason why many people prefer to test the waters or take a chance instead of incurring this extra cost right away. And the other reason, of course, might be a lack of knowledge. One immediate visual difference with the forged pistons is that the ring lands are further down, and the forged pistons are stronger due to the denser material used and forging process. And they also have a higher level of heat resistance. And another possibility would be to regap the piston rings, but we're not going to get into that. So with that out of the way, the second major issue with the 6.4 liter Hemis is pretty much the same as found on the 5.7 liter Eagle Hemis from 2009 and up. And that would be the lifter and camshaft problem. So yes, it does affect the 6.4 Hemis as well. To describe the issue, the roller bearings in the lifter roller fail. These are also called needle bearings, and that causes the roller to seize and end up sliding or tapping on the cam lobe rather than rolling as it should. Another way of saying it is that the lifters are faulty and can stick or get stuck, and that stuck lifter then wears down the camshaft lobes and eats into the cam. The lobes will get worn down far enough to the point that the valves don't open enough anymore and you'll get a cylinder misfire. To go just a bit further into the explanation without getting too technical, inside the roller there are needle bearings which you can see on screen. These needle bearings wear out the supporting pin through them, so the surface of the roller lifter has too much play and up and down movement. That causes more needle bearing damage and they will eventually fail and drop down far enough that the sides of the bearing contact the cam lobes as the roller partially recesses into itself. And this requires lifters and camshaft replacement, about a four to $5,000 US job at a dealership. There are some warning signs and symptoms, but this is a pretty intermittent problem and it's hard to identify at first, or it's not noticed until there's some damage. Some symptoms do include ticking that sounds like a sewing machine, shaking, stalling, and vibration that comes and goes, shuddering, misfires, or a misfire check engine light for the problem cylinder. When the lifters collapse, the valves get stuck and won't go up and down, so you get a misfire as well. The issue primarily occurs after 100,000 miles, although on the 6.4s I've seen many vehicles affected over the 75,000 mile range. I do know that for the 5.7 Hemi, I took a sample size of about 1,000 Hemis, and the average mileage of the affected vehicles for this issue was 118,500 miles. So it is a problem that happens gradually over the life of the vehicle, and not something that affects it early on. Now one of the toughest questions on this specific topic is why does it happen? This question has sparked an incredible amount of debate to the point where you hear new ideas with every search if you're open to listening. I will briefly go over this compilation of theories, but I'm not going to spend too much time elaborating on them, as I've already spoke about these very in depth on my 5.7 liter Eagle Fatal Flaw video, which you can find in the top right corner or the description. So some of the most talked about theories point to awkward pushrod angles where the camshaft was raised and lifters flattened, MDS causing the lifters not to be lubricated properly, a lubrication design flaw of the Hemi itself, or cheap lifter quality during a time where Chrysler didn't have much money. The main two theories would be a lack of lubrication to the needle bearings, so they don't get enough oil in the lifter seizes, and also not changing your oil according to idle hours, as this issue is prevalent on vehicles that have idled extensively like police cars or work trucks. As for some very brief tips to prevent this issue, again I go in more in depth on my Eagle Hemi Fatal Flaw video. Make sure to watch your oil changes and do them every 3,000 miles, or if you idle a lot, the important part is that FCA says to change it every 320 hours. So not by mileage, but by time. You can also use quality synthetic oil to try to idle less and drive at higher RPMs, or even replace the lifters. Chrysler also seems to have updated the lifter roller bearings in 2016. So that's the bulk of the video, but there are a few other problems that have been reported for the 6.4, but they aren't really fatal flaws at all, I just thought I'd touch on them in this video. Many Ram owners have complained about sluggish performance and poor gas mileage when towing, so that's an annoyance there. And earlier 2011 to 2014, 392 vehicles have reported the MDS solenoid failing, resulting in the engine running rough. 
Finally, there was a wrist pin issue that even got a service bulletin for the 2014 model year. After sitting overnight, upon cold start, the 6.4 Hemi would have a loud ticking or knocking noise, as some of these 2014 models were built with incorrect piston wrist pins, causing that noise. So finally, that's the end of this video on the fatal flaws of the 6.4 liter Hemi V8. We've covered a lot and I tried to break it down as best as I could. What do you guys think about the flaws I've described? And for those of you with one of these Hemis, have you experienced them? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.